What's up YouTube? Funnel Doc here. In today's video, we're going to go over the top five myths on why starting a course in 2021 is the best idea you could do. That's right. These are myths, not the truth. This is going to blow your mind and change how you look at starting your course in 2021 or ever. Can't wait to see you in this video. It's really going to be a good one. Some dude, Jeffrey M. Benek, he just um, got a ClickFunnels tattoo. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Funnel Doc here. Like I said, we're going to be going over the top five myths on why you should be starting a course in 2021 or ever, for that matter, first. So myth number one. Uh, people believe that in you look at the typical value ladder and they teach you that you want to do your core offer, usually your course first, and then they teach you to fill in. Well, the problem with that is, first of all, usually your course is anywhere from 400, 500 bucks to a thousand dollars. Most people, when they're starting out, when you have to sell these, it gives you a low margin of error. So if you mess up on your funnel, if you mess up on your ads, if you mess up on whatever you're doing to make sales, it decreases the chance that you're going to make sales and it also decreases the chance that you're going to be successful and make money. Here is the alternate I suggest. Everyone that always talks about a course always says, hey, eventually I'm going to make high ticket. I'm going to do coaching. Now, my question to you is why? Why wait? Why would you wait to do high ticket coaching when if your knowledge is strong enough, which I believe it is to be able to make a course, why not instead do high ticket coaching? The good thing about coaching is it allows you just like when you make a course, the problem with it is one size fits all. Coaching allows you to get one-on-one -on -one engagement initially to prove out your coaching model, to work with people when they have problems. You're able to course correct for them and change and adapt. And it's not this one size, everyone fits in one box model. Coaching is very much a hybrid. This also allows you to prove out your model in your head. And myth number two, so often people tell you, hey, build it out with your students as you go. And the problem with this is when you start that way, um, first of all, you not always can get good students. People, especially if you give people like a free trial or a free, uh, free membership to your course, so often they don't put any effort into it because they didn't pay any for it, anything for it. People pay that pay, pay attention. That's a very true saying. Very often I find out the amount of money that people put in usually correlates to the amount of effort that they put in. So if I'm giving you the discount or free, first, most of the time people aren't going to show up. And then there's other problems where they're like, well, you can ask your students and they'll help you decide what you need in your course. Well, first of all, your students are your students because they don't know what you know. So how are they going to know what questions to ask you to be able to get the results, to be able to move along? They're looking to you for guidance. So if you have to come up with this guidance ahead of time, why not put it in a higher ticket model? Say three to 5,000 starting out is what I recommend for most of my coaching students. As you get more success, more proof, more testimonials, you can double, even triple your prices depending on the results and the amount of value that you're getting. Then what you do now is once you've proven out this model, I roughly say that's about 10 sales. So if you're charging $3,000 for your coaching offer, once you have about 10 sales of them, I'm going to look at that point, I want you to start scaling or to growing it up and then coming in to have a course to support it. It's a re what I call the reverse value or the reverse value ladder. Look in my other YouTube videos to find out about that. So a lot of times, like I said, this is myth number two. A lot of times people say work with your students. Well, it's not as easy to do as you think. And then the other thing is a lot of people are like, oh, I'll make a course. That's super easy. This is myth number three. So often you don't know how to teach properly. Just because you know something doesn't mean you're a good instructor or the way you're laying it out. Remember, if you're building a course, you get basically one shot. You can always later go in and try and update, but that's not going to get the student success necessarily to already signed up. That's the difference between a course and a coaching offer. Now, mind you, I don't have 
any problem with courses. I think courses have their place in your value ladder. But I think that the old way of thinking that you need to build a course out first is just gone, especially here coming in 2021 with everyone coming online. There's so many people that have great knowledge that want to get it out and help people. Why not instead go into a coaching model and work initially one-on-one, -on -one, and then as your coaching grows, you can bring in other people. We'll get into that. That's a whole other video. But trust me, coaching is where it's at. It allows you to have some of the greatest impact. Now, so another thing is, this is myth number three, people think that launching a course is really easy, that you're just going to launch it, it doesn't take much effort. That's BS. You're going to find that usually the amount of sales that you make, even for one sale alone, you could pretty much put the same effort into a high ticket and make the same sales. You're going to find also, trust me, I've done multiple, multiple uh, million dollar launches with courses. The last course that I launched with uh, one of my clients did $844,000 in seven days. I understand courses. The problem is, is there's a lot that goes into it with making sure people don't refund. People, you think the basic stuff like signing up for your actual login, all this stuff would be easy. But when people, this isn't their world, they don't understand it. There is a ton of support initially that goes in to building out a course. So why not, again, if this is gonna be required anyway, not why not just go high ticket? And then it's all, you also have to think about this. It's like a one to many, what would you rather have? A course where you could sell one, make a thousand dollars, or you sell one of your coaching and make three times that. How much easier is it to get to that million or six figures that everyone's looking for, or seven figures or eight? So myth number four, what you need in, is uh, just to turn on ads. So often people are just like, oh, I'm gonna launch a course and I'm gonna turn on ads. Well, guess what? I recommend most people starting out that are gonna say do Facebook ads, bare minimum during your 30 days of testing where you're testing your initial headlines, all your ad sets, your images, everything like that, and you're building out all your ad structure, minimum $3,000 you need to be able to do that. So often you hear all these people spending, oh, just put five, 10 bucks a day in it. BS, okay? I'm telling you, it takes way more than that to do it right. So let's just give you an example. So let's say we have a different, we have the same ad, we want the same copy or words, but we want to test a different headline. A headline is that one big sentence that grabs your attention at the top that really gets you to look at that specific ad. So right there, if we keep everything the same, to say that we have an image, whatever that image A is, we'll call it. Everything the same, but we change the headline, we now have two different ads. Okay, now we have two different ads. Let's say we want to test two different images, the one we have and a different one. Now we have four ads. We have two that came down with the two different headlines and one image for, or two images for each. So we have four different ads. If you're spending $10 and you have four different ads, what are you going to put in each one? Two and a half bucks a day? That's not going to get you any type of engagement or exposure or imaging or anything that uh, Facebook does. They're not impressions was the word I was looking for. They're not, you're not going to get anything like that. So realize you need bare minimum, hundred bucks a day, $3,000 a month, just to start with the testing phase. And then from there, as you find successful ads, you can scale up. But most people, when they're starting a course, don't have three to 5,000 to be able to go for testing during ads. So I recommend go organic. You're going to find that you can get just as many sales by busting your butt on organic and Facebook, YouTube, things like that. So ads are not the, the savior. That's myth number four. People think that they'll just turn on ads for their course and they're going to have, it's going to explode. That very rarely works. And then the one number, myth number five, people are like, my course is going to impact the world. Well, here's the problem right now. The average course has about a 60 to 70% non-open rate. That means 60 to 70% of the people that buy courses right now don't open them, let alone complete them. So if, let's say, over half the people that buy your course aren't going to even open it, how much impact are you going to truly have? Where you look at a coaching offer, 80 to 90% the join a coaching offer, always complete it. They put in the most work, they do the most effort. So this is what I want you to look at when you're thinking about launching a course in 2021 and the future beyond 
is why not prove it out first as a coaching offer where I can make more money, have more impact, have more control over my product, prove it out, get testimonials, get results, get everything you need to be able to have a course now that's modeled off after that. Because now you'll be able to say, look at all the success I've had coaching these people. My course is a no brainer for people that can't afford the coaching. And that's really what it should be. It should be almost like a um, a different, a lower, lower ticketed version, you know, the same results, but you have to think of it like this way. This is a DIY. They're doing it themselves. You know what I mean? So this is a DIY where your coaching is going to be done with you um, rather than done for you. There's three basic phases of a, a purchase. You have uh, do it yourself, do it with you or done for you. And done for you would be like services. We're not going to get in that, but this is considered done with you. Okay. And the good thing about done with you, you can charge high ticket amounts with it. So anyway, these are the five myths on why starting a course in 2021 is the best idea ever. And of course, as you can see, it's not. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to give me a like. Be sure to give me comments below. I'd love to hear about other videos that you want to do. I'm really focusing, as you know, right now on high ticket coaching, coaching offers, and how coaching can impact your life and the world. So thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Funnel Doc out.